Hey, welcome back guys. In this video, I want to show you how you can log uh, fractional share buys uh, if you're using Wealth Simple Trade in this dividend tracking Google Sheet. So if you're new to the channel, this is a dividend tracking Google Sheet that I made. There's a link in the description below where you can get it. But if you are already using it, which many people are, um, now that Wealth Simple Trade has this new feature available, um, I'm just going to run through what it's actually like to buy a fractional share with Wealth Simple Trade and log it properly in this sheet so all of your totals add up correctly and you see exactly what's going on with no errors. So if you open up the Wealth Simple Trade mobile app, you're going to see this option probably presented to you right on the very home screen. Uh, if not, that's okay, but basically you can just click on Explore Eligible Stocks. And there are a couple available that are on American and Canadian exchanges. We can see them basically all right here. They're probably going to give you more in the future. But for now, I'm just going to purchase a Canadian stock and just walk through what it's like. So, for example, let's take Shopify and great Canadian stock here. You're going to see at the top, it just says right away, fractional trading available. You can click on this, you know, to toggle that. Basically, if you see the little pie chart here in the top right, and ultimately, all we need to do is when we want to purchase it, like, um, for example, this is $1,900 for one share. So that's part of the reason why they're offering fractional shares on this one in particular. But anyways, just hit buy. And if you have multiple accounts available in your Simple, just choose which one you want. So I'm going to pick tax-free savings account. And again, at the top here, you notice it says fractional trading is here. Enter as little as $1. Um, basically, if, this, if fractional trading is available on one of these shares, it's going to be toggleable up here. Normally, you just have market buy, limit buy, and stop limit. But now, for some companies that you've seen, you're going to get fractional buy. So we're going to select that. And the way that you do this is you just put in the amount of money that you want to spend, and it's going to give you an estimated amount that you're going to receive in basically decimal form of that company. So let's just put in a number. I'm just going to pick a random number. Let's go with $7. So I'm going to purchase $7 of Shopify, and that's going to work out to be an estimated quantity of about 0 0.0036 shares. I have $27 available to trade, so this should work out. We can also click here on the Shopify price just to double check what's going on. And we're going to have to check back in on that later to determine exactly how much we paid for this because we're going to have to log that in the Google Sheet. So we're going to take $7 of Shopify. I'm going to continue. And just run through here. So how a fractional buy works. Fractional buy allows you to purchase a fraction of a share. You'll start by entering the amount that you'd like to invest. And we'll show you the estimated quantity that you'll get. So this is estimated quantity. So I'm assuming this might change. And we're going to see that later in the video. This type of order is executed at the end of the trading day, so if you so you won't know the exact quantity until it's filled. Now you can click on learn more if you like, or you can just be reckless and hit continue. So let's just do that. We're going to take fractional share, and let's just double check that everything is cool in here. Okay, so we're expecting to spend $7, we're expecting to get 0 0.0036, but it says down here at the bottom that we might not actually get 0 0.0036, and it's going to be filled at the end of the trading day. So typically that's not how I would like to operate. Um, I prefer doing a market order when I know roughly what the price is going to be in that moment plus or minus a bit, or using limit buys and that sort of thing. But this is for demonstration purposes, so we're just going to go ahead with this and uh, see exactly how many shares that we get. So let's go and purchase $7 worth of Shopify. Okay, there we go. It's been sent, but we're going to have to wait till the end of the day to see exactly how much we got. Um, but while we're here, let's click View Details and see what's going on. So we have a fractional buy pending, $7 Canadian worth of Shopify. It's pending at the moment. We've submitted it at this time. Submitted cost, estimated quantity, estimated cost, and estimated total cost. So here we go. This order will be filled by July 20th at the end of the day, and uh, orders could be cancelled, and the number of shares may vary of what you actually purchased. And we can cancel this order up, till, up until an hour before market close. So that's okay. I'm not going to cancel. We're actually going to run through with this and see what happens. So I'm just going to pause the video here and fast forward until the end of the day, and we're going to come back in one second. And just like that, we're back again. It's been a few hours and markets have closed, so we're ready to take a look. Um, 
On the desktop client first, let's take a look here in the activity tab and we can see that the fractional buy has been approved and we actually spent $6.97, not $7. And on the desktop app, it's saying here that we bought 0.004 shares at this price of $19.36.85 for a total cost of $6.97. But if you actually look on the mobile app, it reports a slightly different number of 0 0.0036 shares for the same price. Now, when you actually multiply 0 0.0036 by 1936.85, you get 6.97266, not exactly 6.97. So I'm not entirely sure which one is better. I'd have to do this a lot to check and really take attention, uh, take care in kind of double checking like my, my position gain and loss overall if I was putting in a lot of fractional buys. And if you plan to do a lot of fractional buys, it's worth it to check and see which one is actually going to be more correct, but I can definitely tell you that it's not correct to use the rounded version of 0 0.004 times this price because that is 7.7474. So that's definitely not right to use. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean in a second in the spreadsheet. So for now, I would just go ahead with using a filled quantity of 0 0.0036 times 1936.85. So let's jump into the spreadsheet and I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to go into the transactions page and log this. And I'm going to drop this in as my most recent for the TSE shop. And I did purchase this one on July 20th, 2021. And here is where we're going to drop in the quantity. So we're at 0 0.0036 because that's actually what we hold. It's going to show here as a zero. If you really want, you could write some more decimal places to kind of see what's going on. You could start adjusting the width of the column um, to, uh, to display it to your needs. But I'll just, you know, for now, I'm not planning on keeping this for so long. So I'll just let it be there. But basically, the value is 0 0.0036. For the stock price, you're going to put in 1,936 and 85 cents. And then because this is well simple, you paid no trading fees and it was in Canadian dollars. So here you're gonna see this value of 6.97. And this number is rounded to the nearest cent and it's actually missing you know, 0 0.266 cents. So you could do it like this or alternatively, like I said, I don't know which one is better right now. You'd have to do some experimenting. Um, instead of putting in this value, what you could do is you could divide 6.97 exactly divided by 0 0.0036. And that's going to be a slightly smaller number of 1936.1111 repeating. Or actually, you could even just write in the equation here as say, equals 6.97 divided by 0 0.0036 and it's going to preserve all the decimal values either way it's going to show you this this will result in actual exactly tracking 6.97 dollars leaving your account versus the other one exactly tracks um the price that your that the wealth simple is displaying to you as buying and i know from using the spreadsheet that sometimes these little tiny discrepancies on which decimal place or which rounded number to use can cause problems over the long term. So again, you'd have to double check, you know, later on if you follow if you follow this method by putting in the price that they display, or the method where you calculate it. So this one is not rounded. Either way, one of them is going to get rounded, and one of them is correct. I don't know which one yet. Um, but anyways, um, that's basically what you have to do. So you put in the fractional quantity, and let's just for simplicity's sake, just put in the price that they quote you. And then if you're starting a new position, as always, you would come into the portfolio tab. Uh, and just drop it in here, TSE shop. And, um, and you know, you just do it, fill out all of the regular stuff in here. So this would be information technology. And this, if I wanted it to get included in the table, I would turn off the filter and then I'd click somewhere inside the table and I'd turn the filter back on and now it would be included. So that's how you do it. I'm still, like I said, I'm still really not entirely sure when we look at the transactions, which is better. It seems like it doesn't make a difference, but I know from using the sheet that like my, my sheet that we see tracks exactly to the cent, um, you know, what Wealthsimple reports. And so I'm really interested to see if this rounding error would get 
and like increased if you had done this a lot. Even when we click onto the transaction confirmation and open up from a wealth simple and look here at the details, it's also saying that we have this exact quantity of 0 0.0036 and the price per share of 1936.85 and then the gross amount of 697. And even here, it's not clear about which number they're rounding because they're either rounding the 697 or the 1936.85. Again, not clear enough yet. If you don't care, you know, for a little fraction of a cent here or there, and you don't plan on eventually having thousands of dollars in this position, it might not matter. But if anyone ever does kind of do this a lot and figures out which number Wealth Simple's rounding, let me know. I'm probably not going to find out myself because I don't plan on using fractional shares to that amount where it starts becoming significant. Uh, but we'll see. So anyways, guys, um, that was a lot of talking. Hopefully I didn't lose you there in the rounding errors that are possible with this. And hopefully it's helpful just to see what it's like walking through exactly the process of buying a fractional share on Wealth Simple Trade and then logging it here in the transactions tab on the dividend tracking sheet. And then just some of this, you know, thoughts of whatever's going on. So guys, if you made it this far, thanks a lot for watching. I hope this video helps and I'll see you in the next one.